home. Is that you, Watson? Yes, of course it is. And you almost killed me. Nonsense. I was aiming for the vases. Blindfolded? Watson, quiet, please. I'm trying to concentrate. Ah, Lestrade. What is it this time? He can see me. Well, here it is, and it's a good one, Mr. Holmes. A gentleman by the name of Peter Carey, also known as Black Peter, been murdered. A sailor, most probably. What happened here? Oh, Mr. Holmes, how could you? It's the only exercise I've had all week. A grateful client from Limoges sent me a vase collection this morning. I couldn't think of a better use for it. You're out of your mind. I missed four out of ten. Given you were blindfolded, that was very good. Can I have a try? Am I the only sane one here? I suppose that Watson is right, Inspector. A little brain work would be preferable now. Do please tell us more about Black Peter. Peter Carey, born in 1845 and 50 years old. An ambitious sort, he achieved much success in seal and whale hunting around Scandinavia. Retired in 1884 with a small fortune. He invested his money in a property called Woodman's Lee, near Forest Row in Sussex. It was where he lived for six years, and where he was found dead yesterday. Has the investigation already begun? Yes and no. In fact, this crime is so mysterious that I would prefer you to join me down there. Give me half an hour to prepare, Inspector. Take your time and join me there. I have to go through the yard first. The merry men struck again. What have they done this time? They robbed a powder reserve. I'll meet you at Woodman's Lee, Mr. Holmes. I should have Mrs. Hudson here. I also have several appointments that I must keep this afternoon. I shall go alone then. What a terrible mess! My archive. I can always consult with it, if needed. Seems that the garden was well maintained. It seems that the garden was well maintained.
Mr. Holmes. Inspector Lestrade, when will you remove my husband's body? It's sacrilegious to leave him here like this. As soon as we can, Mrs. Carey, I assure you. Allow me to introduce you to Mr. Sherlock Holmes. He's a detective. No doubt you've heard of him. I'll wait for you in front of the cabin, Mr. Holmes. My condolences, Mrs. Carey. Thank you, Mr. Holmes. Madam, can you tell me if you saw or heard anything unusual upon the night of the murder? At two o'clock in the morning, I heard a terrible scream. But I thought nothing of it then. He would scream all the time when he was drunk. Do you remember at what time you found your husband's body? In the morning, at around seven o'clock, I noticed the cabin door was open but I didn't go in to take a look, for I knew my husband would not have liked it. At around ten o'clock, I dared to glance in through the door and... Oh dear. Was your husband accustomed to receiving visitors? Oh no, I don't think so. I mean, he didn't really have many friends. We lived quite an isolated life here, after his retirement. Can you please tell me what occurred on the evening of the murder? Well, Peter got drunk in the evening. He was in such a terrible temper. Usually whenever that happened, he'd stay all night drinking in his cabin before passing out. The garden is very large and well maintained. Do you employ someone to look after it? It is true. Well, there is a lot of work, but my husband took care of it himself. You have indeed suffered a great loss, Mrs. Carey. Nevertheless, I believe it will be less of a burden for you soon. Yes. Life with Peter was never easy. But he was still my husband. He was different, wasn't he, when you first met him upon your return from Plymouth? Yes, Mr. Holmes. Oh, my goodness, but how do you know about that? You undertook a pilgrimage to the Cathedral of Santiago de Compostela when you were young. That much is evident from the rosary in your hand. The shortest route for the pilgrim from England to Spain is from Plymouth. I believe that you met Peter Carey as a young sailor there, and you married him soon afterwards. That is indeed what happened, Mr. Holmes. How extraordinary. Thank you, madam. Peter Carey's body is inside the cabin. Mr. Holmes? The door is locked. Wait just a moment, Mr. Holmes, and I'll open it. I locked it yesterday to ensure that no one should enter the cabin and tamper with the evidence. Ah, good thinking. Hello, hello, hello. What is it, Lestrade? It seems to me that someone has tried to force it, Mr. Holmes. Let me see. These scratches are fresh. 
You're right. Someone tried to force open the door. I swear these scratches were not here yesterday. Our mysterious visitor came here last night. Well, he's not the man for the job. This lock is not a difficult one. Perhaps he did not have the right tool. What a terrible way to die. The tooth of a sperm whale, probably from one of Peter Carey's catches. This place is not covered with dust, like the rest of the shelf. An object was taken from here. It was larger than a book, a box or a small chest, perhaps. The ship's logs of the Sea Unicorn for the years 1878 to 1884. Peter Carey was her captain. Harpoons for hunting whales. Harpoons. Peter Carey's boots, they look to be a size 8. Old navigation instruments, nothing interesting. Someone drank from this glass recently. The initials P.C. have been crudely burned. A sailor's work. Hmm. This aroma is familiar, but to recognize it, I must construct my associations in one picture. Yes, this is a coarse tobacco. Quite strong and very popular among sailors. Rum, a sailor's drink. It seemed that Captain Carey was enjoying a drink before he met his death. The Sea Unicorn. She was the ship that Peter Carey commanded. The weapon fully penetrated the body. The force of the blow was immense. Peter Carey was impaled to the wall by a whaling harpoon. This man is in his fifties, yet he still looks quite strong. Peter Carey was fully dressed. He was not caught by surprise. It is possible that he knew his murderer. J.H.N. are probably the initials of the owner of this notebook. Hmm. The pattern of the blood stain indicates that the notebook was not lying on the floor prior to the crime but it was dropped into the pool of blood after the death of Peter Carey. 
These abbreviations mean something, but what? This wooden handle is plain and solid. This blood is from the pool underneath the dead body. Peter Carey tried to defend himself with this knife, but he did not succeed. Someone was here yesterday. They attempted to force the door to gain entry. that the garden was well maintained. Dundee. Hammerfest. It's a whaling map. Hmm. The ship's logs of the sea unicorn for the years 1878 to 1884. Peter Carey was her captain. don't match the footprints. These footprints appear to be quite large. Is this your husband's tobacco pouch? I'm not sure. It might be. But he hadn't smoked in a very long time. Your husband's private papers. Do you know where they are? There was a small tin box, barely larger than a book. He kept his papers there. It should be somewhere in his cabin. Thank you, madam. Who could do such a thing? My poor husband. Well, Mr. Holmes, what do you think? Now, I think that we are lucky. And why is that? Because of last night's attempted break-in. Oof. You've lost me. It is very probable that whoever came here hoped to find the door open. They tried to force it with a knife blade, but they failed. What will they do? Why, return tonight, when they will be better prepared. Aha! So what do you propose? We shall remain on the outside, near the window. 
where we stand the best chance of catching sight of our visitor. Well, gentlemen, ready your pistols. We have a long night ahead of us. Who could do such a thing? My poor husband. We need to find a good place for an ambush. Perhaps behind Carey's cabin, near the water. This looks like the perfect hiding place. Did you hear that? There's someone there. I'm gonna collar him. I'll be right behind you. Police! Hold it right there! All right, my fine fellow. Who are you and what are you doing here? You're detectives, I suppose. You imagine that I'm connected with the death of Captain Carey. I assure you I'm innocent. Innocent? And what are you doing in his cabin? Shall I tell you? You came to retrieve what you had lost after killing Peter Carey. But we were here, waiting for you. What is your name? John Hopley Nelligan, but I... I didn't... Do you deny that you came here yesterday? No, but... but I... yes, it, it's just that I couldn't... I'm tired of this. Off we go to the yard. Tomorrow, I'll see that you're put in front of the judge. What? But you can't! I'm not... it's a terrible mistake! Enough! You can explain all of that to the judge. You're coming with me to the yard. But... In light of recent events, it seems evident that your coming here was unnecessary. All the same, I'm very grateful to you, Mr. Holmes. You are welcome, Inspector. But please don't be too hard on our young fellow. I would like to question him tomorrow morning. Good morning, Mr. Holmes. Can I help you? Good morning, Constable. I would like to speak to the fellow who was arrested at Woodman's Lee last night. Ah, the young man. He's waiting in the interrogation room. You can go straight through. His belongings are held in the evidence room. Thank you.
locked. These are the suspect's belongings. The notebook that we found on Peter Carey's cabin floor. These abbreviations mean something, but what? These abbreviations mean something, but what? To my friend, from R. Dawson. And partner, 1883, Dawson. I've seen this name before. Perhaps my archive holds the answer. A handkerchief with the initials J.H.M. A pocket knife. It was used to force the door of Peter Carey's cabin. Does this notebook belong to you? Yes. But where did you find it? I did not know... Uh, I, I thought I'd lost it at the hotel. What do these abbreviations mean? Oh, no. I beg you, I can't. If I told you, it would only make things worse. But I will find out eventually, Mr. Nelligan. The police seized this valuable ring from you. Whose is it? I didn't steal it from anyone. It has always belonged to me. The police seized this valuable ring. I didn't steal it from anyone. It has always belonged to me. The ring's date of engraving is many years ago. You would have been a child then, hardly in any position to receive such an item from a partner. The sea knife was found near Carrie's body. Tell me, Mr. Nelligan, did Mr. Carey try to defend himself or to attack you with it? I don't know. I didn't kill anyone.
So, Mr. Nelligan, who is the true owner of the ring? The ring is mine. No, Mr. Nelligan. I believe that the ring had belonged to your father. Oh, but, but, but how do you know? The jacket you are wearing is made of an expensive fabric that only a man of exceptional wealth could afford. You do not seem to me to be a rich man, Mr. Nelligan. Furthermore, the garment is ill-fitting. It is quite clear that it belonged to someone else, most probably your father. With your father gone and taking with him the family's wealth, as a little boy you had to find yourself a manual job, and it was most probably cleaning fish. You cut your hands often while working, I can tell from the scars. I'm speechless, Mr. Holmes. It, it all happened exactly as you say. Well, I will see you soon, young man. What am I doing here? I've done nothing wrong. to stage a reconstruction. I'm sure that Watson would be happy to oblige.
at your service, Mr. Holmes. Mr. Holmes? This is where I keep my post. Here it is. Now I begin to understand that young man's story, but I am still unclear as to what connects him with the murder. It is time to ask him. This is where I keep my... My archive. I can always consult with it if needed. My archive. I can always consult with it if needed. A spot of whaling, Watson? Would you care to take part? Are you serious? No, but we do need to clarify what happened on the night of Black Peter's murder. A reenactment, then? Is something bothering you? The sailor's knife, Watson. Why was it on the floor? Peter Carey attempted to defend himself? It is possible, but if that is the case, then it alters many things. I don't quite follow you. Tell me, my friend, what is the animal closest to man, morphologically, I mean? Ah, I see what you're getting at, Holmes. You asked me that once before, on the Ripper case, I believe. Do you want to slit some more pig's throats? No. Well, thank goodness for that. I wish to impale one with a harpoon. Wonderful. Watson, let us pay a visit to our butcher friend in Whitechapel. We require the carcass of a well-fed pig. And the harpoon? One of the harpoons on the wall of Black Peter's cabin should do quite nicely. to take a harpoon with me.
should do it. Now I am ready for the experiment. Well, here we are in the preparation room. I can't say that I like the smell of it much. What do you intend to do? To indulge myself in a little experiment. The challenge of lancing a pig's carcass with a heavy harpoon. A little experiment? Stand aside, Watson. This might be dangerous. I am not well practiced in this exercise, yet. Holmes, you should aim for the mark in order to perform the most reliable test. you should try to aim better. This is the best possible result that I could get. Do you see, Watson? Throwing a harpoon and pinning a man to a wall requires either exceptional strength and training or diabolical luck. If it was luck, then it was a chance in a thousand that night. Well, yes. Let us leave now. All right. But before we go, I, I suppose I'll have to pay for all these carcasses you've happily mangled. Very well, but please hurry. Of course. are the suspect's belongings. These abbreviations mean something, but what? Locked. A 
I have heard the story of Dawson and Nelligan, the West Country bankers. Yes, Joshua Nelligan was my father. I am aware that it had a bad ending. When the bank failed, it ruined half the families of Cornwall, whereupon Joshua Nelligan disappeared. My father was under extraordinary pressure. Dawson had retired. I was only ten years of age at the time, but it was still old enough to feel the shame that befell our family. My father was convinced that he could pay off all his debts if the creditors gave him time. He set sail for Hammerfest in Norway in his small yacht just a few days before an arrest warrant was issued. He left my mother a list of the securities he was taking. No word was ever heard from him again. We believe that his vessel went down, taking with it everyone and everything on board. Thank you for the story, Mr. Nelligan. At last we are making some progress. Interesting. Joshua Nelligan and Peter Carey were both at sea in Norway. There is definitely some connection between Peter Carey and Joshua Nelligan's disappearance. Eighteen eighty three. That's the one I need. This is the crew list of the Sea Unicorn. Log notes for July. Nothing special. Log notes for August. These pages have been torn away. Canadian Pacific Railway, CPR, a torn piece from a bond certificate. I have seen this abbreviation somewhere very recently. There are three ways of discovering what happened in August of 1883 aboard the Sea Unicorn. The first two of these will require speaking with a dead man. The last would be to locate vital witnesses, the sailors involved in this whale hunt campaign. The Sea Unicorn. Thank <laughs> you. 
these are the suspect's belongings. I wonder if these are connected. Tell me, Mr. Nelligan, what exactly were you hoping to find inside Peter Carey's cabin? I, I... I was trying to find some information about my father. I assume you had another purpose, to retrieve the bond certificates. Am I correct? Yes. I discovered some time ago that a few of the missing securities had reappeared on the London market. You can imagine my amazement. I spent months trying to find them, and at last I discovered that the original seller had been Captain Peter Carey. These papers, they belong to my family, but I could not find them there. Well, I will see you soon, young man. Something new, Watson. I have the list of sailors who were aboard the Sea Unicorn. We shall soon learn what happened to Nelligan's father. I have only to find them. Let us hope they are still working at the harbor. I think that if you pretend you're from Scotland Yard... I doubt it, Watson. And really, I would prefer that all of this remains quiet for now. But I have another solution. I'll call in the specialist. And who might they be? The secret police division of Baker Street. Ah, you mean young Wiggins and his gang? Yes. Believe me, you'll receive more useful assistance from these little urchins than from a dozen yard detectives. Those children are everywhere. They see and hear everything, and they are cunning. All they lack is organization. I'll summon them. How will you do that? There is always a watch beneath our window. I have only to call him. Wiggins, could you come upstairs, please? 
At your service, Mr. Holmes. Wiggins, I need you to track down certain people for me. I'll give you a list. You can read, can't you? Big Oliver from our gang. He can, because his father is the coachman of a famous lawyer. Fascinating. Here is the list of sailors. Sailors? Easy. Just got to look where the rum and the red lights are. Sorry to trouble you, Mr. Holmes, but the inspector asks that you come to the station as soon as possible. Uh, thank you. I'll be there shortly. As always, what happened? We have a new suspect, Liam Hurley. I'm thinking that this case will be resolved very quickly now. Interesting. Great help. Well, the constable that I left at Woodman's Lee noticed a suspicious individual prowling around during the night. Do you have him here? Yes. He refuses to speak with us, but we'll make him too. Let us hope so. Ah, oh, yes, and one more thing. The constable told me that at the time of his arrest, the fellow was writing a letter. Mm. Do you have it? Of course. It's in the evidence room, at your disposal. Admit that for once, Mr. Holmes, Scotland Yard is a step ahead of you. Huh? In breath, take him. are the suspect's belongings. Liam Hurtley's old boots. They're a size nine and a half. The stains are fresh. They can be removed with the proper chemicals. A pen. Nothing unusual about it. These boots match the footprints exactly. Who could do it?
I need to prepare a chemical agent that is capable of removing fresh ink. For this purpose, the chemicals from the flasks should be combined in a certain order to perform a chain reaction. First condition, all seven reagents should be used. Second condition, orange reagent should be the third one in the sequence after the blue reagent. Third condition, colorless reagent should be added after the orange reagent. Now I can proceed further. Let us see if the content of this letter sheds a little light upon the mystery. I did as you asked and hid them well. Interesting. How would Hurtley react to this? Please escort this suspect for interrogation. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Sherlock Holmes. I would like to ask you a few questions. I've already told the police that I've nothing to say. And you're not even part of the police. Precisely. And considering your situation, it might be wise to speak with someone who is, shall we say, rather more neutral. You are a suspect in a murder case. I know. Inspector Lestrade told me. It's ridiculous. Could you at least tell me who you are, and exactly what happened that you should be brought here? My name is Liam Hurtley. That I can tell you. But you're not getting any more than that. Well, we shall see. Tell me, Mr. Hurtley. What were you doing at Woodman's Lee? Woodman's Lee? I've never been there. The second pair of boots that you had with you when you were arrested perfectly match the footprints found near the cabin where Peter Carey was murdered. Footprints? That's your proof? How many men have boots like mine? That doesn't make me a murderer. So tell me, Mr. Hurtley, what did you hide? Hide? What are you talking about?
I did as you asked and hid them well. Should I continue? My letter? But the ink? That's impossible. A touch of chemistry, nothing special. Well, you're a smart one. But it's nothing. If you want to know, I was referring to my tools. It was to do with my work, see? I will check that, Mr. Hurtley. Now that your presence at Woodman's Lee has been proven, would you care to explain it? I don't remember. What would I be doing there anyway? Now that your presence at Woodman's Lee has been proven, would you care to explain it? I don't remember. What would I be doing there anyway? Because you are the gardener at Woodman's Lee. I'm not. How did you... I observed your hands. They told me that you work with the earth. Small fragments of plants snagged to your trousers indicate that you were mowing very recently. But the most obvious clue presented itself in the bird embroidered on your handkerchief. A crested tit, if I'm not mistaken. All right, all right, you got me. Yes, I am a gardener, and I went there to get my tools. That's all for now. Hurtley's stories are false leads, but now I know one thing for certain. I must examine the site where the garden tools are kept at Woodman's Lee. Does the name Liam Hurtley mean anything to you? No, I don't know anyone by that name. Madam, we have information that the valuable stolen papers are hidden amongst the garden tools here at Woodman's Lee. We need to find them. Oh my. Our tools are kept inside the shed that's right behind me. Here is the key to open it. Thank you, madam. Who could do such a thing? My poor husband. Let's see what could be hidden here. Let us see what is in this box.
bundle of letters in a woman's hand with the Carey family monogram. Hurtley and Mrs. Carey were in a relationship. That is interesting. Madam, I am aware of your affinity with Liam Hurtley. Oh, what are you talking about? Mrs. Carey, we found your letters. My letters? I asked Liam to return them to me. I wanted to burn them. Why did Mr. Hurtley put them inside the garden shed? I... I don't know. I wanted them back, but I couldn't see him, not after... what happened. Well, here they are. Oh, this is terrible. Terrible. Liam, how could he? I... after what he has done. You believe that he killed your husband? No, I do not know. I do not know. Leave me alone. Thank you, madam. I wonder if Wiggins has managed to find any sailors. Mr. Holmes, we found the sailors from that list you gave us. Well done, Wiggins. Let me see. This is interesting. This is interesting. Let us review the other sailors now. This is interesting. Let us review the other sailors now. This is interesting. Let us review the other sailors now. Wiggins, could you gather some information on one of the sailors that you found? His name is Patrick Cairns. We found Patrick Cairns. Good job, Wiggins. Where is he? He lives in a small furnished dump of a room, but he's always at the Sea Witch Pub, where he does arm wrestles for money and drinks. Excellent. Here is your reward. Two guineas. Thank you, sir.
If I wish to speak to Cairns without alarming him, I had better dress as a sailor. Now I can approach Cairns and see if he recognizes the pouch. to buy you a drink. Good winner as well. That's good. Let's have a drink. <laughs> good. You're a good type. Seems you've managed to settle down in life. You've got money, eh? Not all that much. Oh, well. At least you're not as poor as me. Why do you say poor? You're not working. I'm a harpooner. But you see, the whalers are rare. They don't pay much. So as a result, I find myself arm wrestling to pay for my drink. A harpooner. Interesting. You've had a lot of adventures, I bet. Uh, of course. It's been a dozen years since I sailed. I've seen everything. Old Wallace, damn Black Peter, Great Roger, who sailed to the Cape of Good Hope. 
Black Peter, you say? I've heard rumors about that one. He was worse than all. Liar. Violent, too. Swigging those fist of his around. He's a tyrant. And not much of a captain. At least, not as good as Great Roger. I see. Yes. I was told terrible tales about Black Peter. But you ain't heard the worst. Tell me, and let's have another drink. It was in 1883 that it happened. The August of that year. Peter Carey was captain of the Sea Unicorn. And I was a spare harpooner. We were coming out of the ice pack on our way home. One evening, we saw a little craft that had been blown north. There was only one man on her. And he wasn't a sailor. The crew must have thought that she'd found it. They made for the Norwegian coast in the dinghy. I guess they all drowned. We took the man on board. And who was he? <laughs> I don't know. During the crossing, he and the skipper enjoyed some long talks. His baggage was just a tin box. That's strange enough. Aye. Even stranger was that on the second night, he disappeared. Nobody knew what happened to him. And of course, nobody could ask Black Peter about it. You know what happened, don't you? I do. I saw the skipper tie his heels and push him over the rail in the middle of my watch on that dark night. Two days before we sighted the Shetland Lights. Black Peter's a murderer. Aye. Those that know him wouldn't be surprised to hear it. But all this will stay between us. All right? Of course. Back in a second. I'm off to the Kazi. I'll be here with my drink. Here it is. <laughs> Have you got any tobacco? We've run out of wine. Nah, I lost my pouch. I don't know where. Wait a minute. What's this? Oh, is this your tobacco pouch? Well, oh, oh it is. <laughs> Well, I have to go now. I know a captain who's planning an expedition to Cape Cod. Captain Ahab is his name. He commanded the Pequod. He might need good harpooners. I'll tell him about you. Maybe, if you like, I... I'm done here. Care to lose another ten shillings? <laughs>
You met Patrick Ken. You met Patrick Cairns, the harpooner. These are the suspect's belongings. These abbreviations mean something. What am I doing here? I've done nothing wrong. What am I doing here? I've done nothing wrong. I'm not saying another... I'm not saying... Leave me alone, please.
Good afternoon. I must be at the wrong address. I right, speak with a ship's captain, a eh? Captain Ahab. Is that you? No, my name is Sherlock Holmes. That detective fella. So, you wanted to see me? That is correct. We need to talk. About what? About Black Peter, who was killed in his own hut with a harpoon. You know, don't you? Yes. How? The tobacco pouch. You recognized it. Oh, the sailor. It was you. Unbelievable. Well, fine. I confess. But if you really do know everything, you should also know that I didn't want to kill him. He made me do it. I know. Did you know about this story with the bond certificates? Did you need money? Yeah. I just wanted him to cough up a little silver. I'm out of work, and I thought maybe he could help me. Well, he refused outright, and he insulted me. I reminded him I knew all about that murder he committed at sea in 1883. Then he got mad when I spoke about his treasure. I barely just had time to throw the harpoon at him before he could jump at me with his knife. You know the truth? What will you do now? I ask that you return the bond certificates. Keep some of them. You will need them in your exile. It is better that you leave the country for a few years. And you won't say anything to the police? I will not say anything as long as you return the money. Well, I'll do as you ask. But what about Inspector Lestrade? I will deal with him. Goodbye. It's good that you asked me to come, Mr. Holmes. We do need to talk. About what? What do you mean? Our case, Mr. Holmes. You sent me a message via your little thug. His name is Wiggins, Inspector. Telling me that the case is solved. Well, Mr. Holmes, tell me, who is our murderer and where is he? The morgue. Eh? His name is, or rather was, Pablo Coventral. He was also on the ship with Peter Carey, and he was a harpooner. I'll tell you everything, Inspector, but do calm down. Mrs. Hudson will bring us tea and orange cake. Orange cake? You're spoiling me, Mr. Holmes. That's my favourite. Ah, Mr. Holmes. Inspector Lestrade told me that I should thank you for clearing my name. He also said that you were waiting for me here. I came as fast as I could. I cannot thank you enough. It is all because of you that this nightmare is finally over. I believe that this belongs to you. My father's securities? Incredible! But how did you get them? It would take far too long to explain. Tell me, this is extraordinary. You are a genius. Then that may serve as an explanation. Goodbye, Mr. Nelligan, and good luck. Goodbye, Mr. Holmes, and thank you. A thousand times thank you.